It has been labelled as one of the biggest professional wrestling mistakes in modern history. Tony Khan released the footage and it absolutely stunk out the joint. Welcome back to Fog Wrestling. We're here to review AEW Dynamite 10th of April edition of this show. It was the answer to WrestleMania. Tony Khan had big things promised, but in the answer, he couldn't keep the competition out of his mouth. We've got CM Punk references, we've got Triple H references. It's pretty much WWE light, isn't it? WWE light, banter, attack WWE, hope for the best, name drop WWE, hope for the best, showcase stars that aren't in our company but are in WWE and hope for the best. It's pretty much just WWE are having a successful period right now. It's WrestleMania season. Let's try and leech off WWE any way we can. So that, that's what this show was, from showing the embarrassing CM Punk stuff to Will Ospreay uh, taking a shot at Triple H that was totally uncalled for. He must think that he's the first person to be, I don't know, coming up with organic, original shit about Triple H and Stephanie. That stuff's been getting done now for the last two decades. Will Os I mean... It, it seems more relevant when people that actually know Triple H or people that were actually around in that era say it. People that might have been affected by it. But when Will Ospreay's coming out and he's trying to give you the whole, oh, the Triple H only got successful because he worked with, he, he slept with Steph. I mean, fuck off. Yeah. Fuck off, you slag. You slag. And we'll get to it all. He thinks he's great because he's having great rest. Who says who? Who says he's having great wrestling matches? Dave, Tony Mel Khan. Dave Meltzer and a bunch of fucking nerds. The fact is, nobody really outside of this small little bubble has heard of Will Ospreay, right? It doesn't matter if fucking Meltzer's giving him seven stars. Who gives a shit? It's some old bastard that isn't even that important. He's not even in this he's not even in the so-called demographic. That <laughs> him and Jericho spend so much time talking about oh, the only thing that matters is the demo. Fewership's not important. Well, you guys aren't even in the fucking demo. So your opinion melts and then doesn't fucking matter. I'm in the demo. So for every seven... Are you in the demo? For every seven stars that Meltzer's gave fucking Okada or Osprey, whatever he's called, you can just take them all away. Those right. stars are irrelevant. Those stars do not count. Those stars are not up in the sky shining bright. They're dull. They've been switched off. Meltzer, you don't count. You're not in the demo. Fucking wake up. Smell the coffee. Drink some or drink some bleach and fuck off. What, no, why does it matter though? Why, why in Will Ospreay's mind, even though he didn't kick off the show, we're just ranting on him here for the sake of it. Why does it fucking matter in his mind that he's having the best wrestling matches? And before anyone goes, but we've seen Kurt Angle and Shawn Michaels come up with stuff. Like, see when Shawn Michaels, right, was saying he was having these mania matches and mania moments, at least it's fucking mania. He's the showstopper. It's the fucking gimmick. He delivers... Every week in, week out, and at the big show. What, 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 what is Will Ospreay's biggest match? Before someone in the comments goes, oh, he did it in a Japanese high school fucking... I don't care where he did it, right? What, what, what about the Western Eye? Where, where have we seen it? We've no seen it. But let's talk about something you must see. It's Fat Boy Joe. You can't miss him. He kicks off the show against Dustin Ro Ro Ronalds. Do, 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 do. Um, but, do, do, do. but then uh, what happens? Swerve Strickland batters and throws him through a table, so the match is delayed to later. And it's like... We're five years on for AEW's inception, right? And notice how heavy this show is with, like, stars that are just not created in this show, in this company. Yeah, it's a bunch of TNA guys, really, into our, like, pe yeah. our people they got for T uh, WWE. Like, I get it, the wrestling business has been around a long time. Like, TNA didn't exactly... It created new people, but also, you know, relied heavily on the past. But I feel like the, the longer AEW goes on, the people that created at the start are just not here. But yeah, this match is scheduled for later. Uh, we then have Adam Copeland against Penta El Ciro Maida. This match doesn't do it for me. I've seen a lot of people marking out for Edge here because he's he's jumping, he's doing flapjacks, he's, he's doing all this Lucha Libre shit. That's not what put Edge over, right? Why is he doing this shit at the age of 50? Why is he even doing this cope open pitch? And it doesn't look good. See, when you see Edge trying to do all this Luchador stuff at fucking 50 odds, the guy never did it in his prime. Yeah, so why is he doing it? And now he's it, trying to do it when he's like well out of his prime. He, no, and you know what, right? It's to appease this pish fucking audience. And he's a sellout bastard, Edge, because see, fucking, see, this is what's going on in Edge. And this goes for every single person in the company Edge, Shivani, JR, Pete, Dustin Ronalds. 
even though he's a fucking freak. Right? See all these guys? Why are they allowing the Young Bucks and Tony Khan and people like, and fucking whoever else, and Omega and Jabronis, why are they allowing this multi-million dollar company, even though it's not, it's not like it's created that money itself, but why are they allowing it to go down the shitter? All these guys, they've all got voices. I mean, Jericho's a guy that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Vince and confronted him on so many occasions, right? And all the, JR as well wasn't afraid to voice his opinion. But see, it just everybody's got a price, as the million dollar man said, and seeing they've got seeing they're getting this influx of money, they're they're afraid. They're afraid to speak it. Edge knows this ain't right. Look at him last week, man, pandering to Tony Khan, talking about the company. Oh, we have fun here with our friends and we like to wrestle. Fucking get in the bin with that pish. Edge retains, but I, you know what? I'm I've lost respect for everyone. I didn't have I didn't have respect for most of them, like so. No, but I'm talking about Edge. I'm talking about Shafani. It's like Shafani looking disgusted at the young bucks hang later on. He's the fucking guy that passed the passed it over to Punk. Oh, he's not listening to us, CM Punk. You need to do well, you Yeah, the buck the Buck says that Jack Perry's the fall guy and all this. I think CM Punk's the fucking fall guy. Yeah. CM Punk's only one with a pair of nuts that was willing to actually stand up and confront Jack Perry. Tony Khan. What do you want me to do about it? <laughs> you're no, the, you you're the boss. Or you're, sp or you're supposed to be. Shivani crying. Oh, I don't know what's on the tape. Well, why don't you fucking ask him, man? Why don't you be like, here, I'm not commentating on this show if we don't know what's going ahead. Because this could this could derail us. But no, they're See, too afraid. As long as the paychecks come yeah, in. I, I lose respect for Shivani. He put Punk in that position. Yep. He's, he's like, inadvertently caused this. Yeah. He could have been like, nah, wait, don't be showing that. That only happened really because of me, because I, I tried to get Punk to deal with it because Jack Perry wouldn't listen to anyone else. And, and so what? They showed the footage and I mean, all it did was prove that CM Punk's been telling the truth. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to the footage in a bit, but we've got an interview with Chris Jericho, Lion Hook. I'm done. I'm done with Jericho, right? He's teaming up with Shibata. This is shit. This is what this is. Shit banta. It's, it's pish. Well, what, what is Hook doing for you? Oh, wait, Shibata, that's that legendary guy for Japan, isn't it? Aye, that guy. Uh -huh, aye. That guy. Um, Stokely comes out and apologises for saying that Eddie Kingston smells like Burger King in Newport. Just don't know why he came out and apologised for that. That's, probably, that's what he smells like. Burger King's, that's where the guy belongs, damn it. That is where the guy. I'd say he probably smells more like shit and B.O., but uh, well, there you go. Ah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure... Burger Kings in the uh, in some areas of America do smell like that. So let's talk about the footage, folks. We've we got weed as well. We've already made a lot of video. Well, let's get the weed out here. Because, well, we're not getting the weed out, but let's talk about let's the we weed out all the crap Aye. in AEW. Right, so let's talk about the footage. The young bucks here are trying to pretend that what happened is groundbreaking. This could have brought down all in. This could have tore down and ruined AEW's biggest event in their history. How? How could this have ruined fucking anything? Let's say WrestleMania 40, night one. You're, you're, you're like 20 minutes for going out there. And, and two guys backstage are having a little bit of a shoving match and a scuffle. Is Triple H, first of all, going to claim he's fearing for his life? And then a Rock and Roman, as a tag team, going to air footage and go... You know what? I don't know if we can have this tag team match tonight because these two guys pushing each other backstage could have brought down the entire WrestleMania. No! How could it? It was two guys backstage and they got a, they had a confrontation and it got a wee tiny bit physical. Young Bucks are making it as if this could have brought down the entire company. How? I do not fucking know. Tony Khan says he, he feared for his life. How? Again, I mean, I do not know. See, looking at this, I would expect this to happen on a regular basis in wrestling. Hell, even in fucking normal jobs, I would expect this to happen from time to time. No, yeah, that, like, it's a confrontation, right? It's not like, you would be led to believe that Punk put him in a coma. Jack Perry. Two guys, McDonald's in a shoving match. Oh no, they're putting the Big Mac at risk. The Big Mac might go extinct. Oh no, man, what the fuck are we doing? Like, well, what are we doing here? What was the point of showing this? Just because Punk came out and bashed AEW, and, and you know what, he didn't really bash AEW, he just told the truth. And if telling the truth is bashing yourself as a person or your company, then that says more, he about, could, he could that says more about the company and person than, than it does anything else. All Punk, did, all Punk did last week was tell the truth, and yeah, 
it made AEW and Tony Khan look bad. But that's because AEW and Tony Khan are bad. See if Tony Khan was a good fucking leader, or he was a good man, Punk would have said that, and then Tony Khan would look good. But if Tony Khan's a pathetic fucking loser that isn't in control and doesn't take charge, then Punk's going to tell the truth and it's going to make Tony Khan look like the pathetic loser that he is. So it's not like Punk bashed AEW. Punk told the truth, and the truth is, AEW sucks. I mean, it's that simple. Yeah, you've got two heels here trying to make CM Punk look bad, right? And then they're also trying to blame this incident on why they lost it all in. How? It's a fucking... No, this is a mess, man. Like, this makes... This is just... This is awful. <laughs> you know, like, it'd be like Rock and Roman Reigns saying, ah, we, we lost because bloody... The Miz and um, Damien Priest were pushing each other backstage. I mean, what the fuck, really? I mean, why? On <laughs> what planet? Yeah, How does like, that make sense? This incident's got nothing to do with the Young Bucks. Now, yeah. At least if it was the one previous with, uh, what's that guy called? Ace Steel or something? Ace Steel and, and, and Larry Omega. the Dog? No, no but I, I, just, I just don't get it. Larry the Dog's a mutant, yet he'd still probably beat up Kenny Omega. Yeah. But see if you actually look at both instances, right? Which one's worse? I think the first one's worse. I mean, the elite have stormed into Punk's changing room. We didn't see that though, did we? Well, no, we didn't see it, right? But what we're led to believe is that they've stormed into his dress. I room. want to see that one though, because that's the one where Punk says shit did go down. No, but Punk, yeah, all right, a couple of black guys. Punches punch are getting thrown, and they actually hurt his dog, right? Seeing this one. Punk described it and it's exactly what happened, so I'm going to believe Punk on the first instance. What, what, what sounds worse? I think the first one sounds worse. I think Punk and Jack Perry are slabbering each other. Well, one of the young bucks did have a black eye or something the next day, didn't he? So. Yeah, Punk Punk here is, is screaming out for someone in the leadership role, i.e. Tony <laughs> Khan, to do something. He's like, right, you're not going to do nothing, so I need to do something. Well, Punk did say his words were, either you handle this because you're not going to like the way I handle it. Yep, and uh, right. what proceeds to happen is CM Punk, Jack Perry, well, say, there's no Jack Perry, but it's just CM Punk, headlock, pushing, good night, Samoa Joe runs over. As fast as I've seen Samoa Joe run. Aubrey Edwards r runs the other way, you've got uh, Chris Hero in there, you've got Jerry Lynn, people like that. What a fucking jobber he is, Chris Hero, for God's sake. Chris Hero, buddy. Cassio, I know. Cassio's, oh no. It's just, oh, this entire thing. I remember CM Punk used to vouch for that guy all the time. He should have had Roman Reigns' spot, buddy. That has to be one of the worst takes of a time. Aged like fucking milk, that is. <laughs> Aged like a big glass of sour milk, but um, yeah. Awful. Apparently, when, well, I say not apparently, I've seen the footage. When they were showing this, they were chanting CM Punk in the arena. Yeah, they were. The crowd were chanting CM Punk. There was a couple of people in the crowd chanting fuck CM Punk. And then I go, oh, look at Punk, he attacked him for no reason. Uh, but um, a couple of neckbeards, like, I mean. Yeah, I mean. They it, were, the people were trying to get a fuck CM Punk chant going, but it wasn't happening. See, if this happened in WWE, man, it would be split up, and they would be like, right, shake yeah. hands. Even they late, would, hug, hug it out, something like that. Even later in the night, when the Young Bucks came out, there was CM Punk chants. Yeah. Hey, and Tony Khan's proud, because apparently the ratings look pretty good, and I think it's the best ratings that Dynamite's had in a long time. But, it's embarrassing. Uh, you know what? If if you need to air footage, we're yeah, not going to say... Yeah, but see if WWE went here. See next week, we're going to show you what really went down in the Chris Benoit household over that weekend in 2007. Of course the fucking ratings are going to go up. Or even the screw job or something like that. I, so, you know... Even though we've seen a bit of the screw job, like... No, it's ridiculous. It's a cheap-ass ploy. We're, we're going to show you 17 different angles of Brett, Deck and McMahon and be like, I fuck, I'll see that. I'll tune in to watch that. No, but... You know, the way they went about this is so wrong. How about, right, you actually make t Tony Khan go, like, psychotic and actually make it a character, and he's talking about this footage. At least that would work. At least it would get fucking heat on the guy. This does not... The young bucks are already heels. Well, what fucking good does it make them looking punk bad? P Jack Perry, right, the young bucks and punk, in this instant, are all heels. Because they're trying to make Punk look bad, and therefore if you make someone look bad, they're supposed to be a heel. Makes no sense to make Punk look bad if he's a face and they're all three of heels, right? Then it cuts to the, the announce table. Tony Schiavone wants to kill himself. Well, I mean, it doesn't, it's irrelevant what they're trying to make Punk look like. It's, it does not work for them. Oh, no, yeah, but that's the biggest <laughs> problem, right? Like, no, but they could try and portray Punk as a heel or the baby face. What the fuck does it matter? Yeah. No, but let's say Punk, let's say Punk pulled out a knife and he was, he, he stabbed 
Jack Pet and he killed him. All right, you've created a heel, but it doesn't fucking work. So what's the what's the, what the what's the point? What did that what did that achieve? Like what 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 would I I don't see what would have possibly been on that footage that you would have thought it was never going to do anything for AEW. All it was going to do is maybe make Punk look bad. Therefore, it's a bit you know it's a bit pathetic and childish. I, I don't see what anything on there was going to do to improve AEW as a company going forward. At best. It would have made CM Punk look like he was full of shit. Yeah, I would say what happened was probably worst case scenario. But then they knew that. It was so... See the fact they're not even showing it, right? In the YouTube clips and the fact that they're copywriting it anywhere. Yeah, no, but another... They're covering it up. Another thing, right? The, the, the young bucks are treating that, right? Now, let's actually just... Let, let's just look at what's happening here. The young bucks are showing you this, right? They are saying that this could have brought down the entire show. Tony Khan's saying he was fearing for his life and they're bringing this in and they're putting it on TV, they're televising this. It was a shove backstage. They're basically just saying, I mean, we know that Kayfabe's dead, but they're basically just saying, look, all this shit's no real. That's that same basically just coming out and saying that. Yeah, because you've got Samoa Joe splitting up a fight between a guy that he's supposed to be taking on two minutes time. Why the fuck... Right? Would why would punk pushing someone be the like the worst crime ever committed in wrestling when you see some of the shit that people have done to each other in wrestling? Yeah, no, I didn't even I didn't even clock on. Even though it's that, staring you blatantly obvious in the face, you're right. That's 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 saying basically is I know we already know, right? And I know Kafe is but that's saying basically saying, Oh look, all this shit <laughs> this is all pathetic. This isn't no, real. You know, but this, no, is, this is all fake crap. None of this is actually this none, would, no, none that, of this is legit. That would be like Oh, we've got backstage footage of that episode where Hank and Gummy die and Breaking Bad, and you've got you've got Hank pushing Uncle Jack in the in the the makeup room. Like, oh, this almost ruined the end of Breaking Bad. It's like what? No, it's like it is. It's breaking the fourth wall, man. No wonder Shivani's like this. But let's no. Let, we talked about it earlier. This guy's look. We get it. We know wrestling's no real, but I don't think you should be showing that on your fucking program. Now I think Tony Schiavone's just as bla- just as much as blame here as Tony Caninco. He's the one that put this at CM Punk's door, and also you see, he's got such a problem. Mate. When you walk out, he's made his money. It's pathetic. The to- he's he's looking. He's disgraced. Or no, but no, this, this is would- bash at the beach. No, that, this would be like the Rock beat down on Cody Rhodes on Raw. And remember they showed a wee bit where the rock's like, ah, fuck it, like he continued on. That 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 that, that looks real though. That looks good. Yeah. Rock's like, I don't give a fuck if he shows off there. That would be like Cody Rhodes getting up as soon as Rock went off the air and went, I don't like how you whipped me there, Rock. You whipped me too hard. And then they show that you whipped my ball. Oh, oh, you want to see Cody Rhodes react to the Rock? And then they show you the clip the next week, and it shows you Cody Rhodes getting up and, and not being happy with the way you whip. And, and it shows that it's actually fake. It's like. WWE wouldn't do that. No, no wrestling company worth their fucking salt would do that. No. So I don't. I don't know. This was. It was. It was. I was saying it's fake. Yeah. This is all fake. This is none of this is legit. Look, they're fighting for a world title, but you know Samoa Joe's going to help this guy break this up. What the fuck? I don't get it, man. Yep. Yeah, awful. Um, it's just one of those bizarre moments in wrestling. WWE just don't do this. Like we know wrestling's fake, right? But come on, don't rub it in our. Don't rub it in our face. No, like, but you, you always hear, though, that, like, Tony Khan's like, oh, I'm not Shane, and I won't make the same mistakes as WCW. This is a million times worse than WCW, right? Like, obviously it is, but I'm talking about, like, like Bash at the Beach 2000. See when Hogan did that, right? With Jeff Jarrett and Russo. At least that was, like, <sighs> people going into business for themselves. Tony Khan purposely set this up like this. This ain't the young bucks taking this footage without his knowledge and airing it. He's the one that put this shit in motion. So I don't see I don't see how it's even comparable, right? Out come FTR, looking very small, very midgety here, and it's just a bunch of nothing into it. Yeah. Oh, how dare you show that? What's that going to achieve? That's our buddy you've shown, right? Anyway, let's talk about Will Osprey. He comes out, he says, uh, I've only got five minutes because TV time's expensive and proceeds to waste five of those minutes talking about Triple H and WWE, so take it away. What's your thoughts? I already made a full fit on this. Just pathetic. Osprey coming out, 
talking about the whole grinding thing, like I said, this has already been done. It's been done by people way better, way more relevant, people that had a legit reason to use it, people that have been fucked over by Triple H. But, uh, you know, no normally this is something that would happen in a shoot interview or something like that. Uh, it's not normally something you'd expect to see on TV. And it's like, well, why is... They're not even in the same company, though. It just it, it makes no logical sense. It's not like... Tri did Triple H come out on WWE programming and call it Will Ospreay? No. It was a throwaway comment in an interview or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah and it Os wasn't It wasn't just Will Ospreay. Yeah, no, but you're right. WWE programming, eh? WWE, it's supposed to be the story. It's supposed to be a TV show. Could, would, would Triple H come out before Mania, the Raw for Mania? I'm the game. I want to talk about the main event. But first, I need to talk about AEW as well, Osprey. Would it fuck? It would never happen. No. It would never fucking happen. Yet, Osprey's talking about how TV time is important. Yet, he's going to talk all his TV time about Triple H, a guy in a different company. But Triple H was right, seeing he said that these guys, they don't want to do the grind. And you know, see if they don't want to do it, see if they don't want to work the house shows, that's fair enough. But do you never think just do we just don't think paying Okada and Osprey that amount of money's fucking worth it? it? No, honestly, see Osprey and Okada, they would not they'd be lucky if they got five hundred grand a year. See in their first year, they that they would be fucking lucky, man. People think, oh well, they probably get a couple of mil couple of mil. Planet you on. They they would they would not seven fifty at the absolute most and there would need to be, I don't know, Triple H would need to be drugged out as he'd see that time he drugged Stephanie to marry him. Somebody would need to drug Triple H to get him to sign a contract. I don't know, maybe stick some fucking ink up his nostrils and hope that his nose accidentally falls on the paper and scribbles a few signatures. But that's the only way Triple H is signing off for 750 or above on those guys. Two fucking bums. Have you actually looked at some of the... Pack, the I agree. Have you actually looked at some of the salaries people in WWE are getting? And, and these people, some people think Osprey and Okada. Like, last time I seen it, Nakamura's on 400k. Yeah. If Nakamura's on 400k, right, why do you think, he's got WWE experience, he's had like WWE television fucking national exposure for like five years. Ten years. And I think when he came over, he had more hype about him than Okada. Absolutely. So, like, if he's only on 400k... You think Okada and Osprey are getting four mil? See, as bad as um, Dave Meltzer is, the only reason I'd even heard of Okada and Osprey is because he's gave their st matches five stars. That's a problem. See, when the only reason you know, guys, is because of some sad six-year-old man that rates fucking wrestling matches. See, if Meltzer was dead, I would probably never heard the Okada until the last six months. Yep. And Osprey as well. No, nah, probably. Now, I'm not going to claim that I knew a lot about them, but obviously... Over the past, like, two, three, four years, I recognise the name because they've been spoken about by Dave Meltzer and they've been awarded seven stars for matches. But other than Dave Meltzer, never heard them brought up. Yep. Never heard anyone talk about them. Never heard any company be interested in them. Haven't heard anything. And it's sick, man. I mean, between the CEO, Okada, and Osprey, I mean, Tony Khan has spent damn near 40 mil on their contracts. Scary. 40 fucking mil. And, and the funny thing is here, it's like he's in a feud with Daniel Bryan and he, I think for the five minutes he spent four and a half about Triple H and then about ten seconds about Daniel well, Bryan. That's oh, that, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm younger, I'm stronger and I'm quicker than you. And that's well, it. that's ten seconds more than they've spent previous weeks building up the feud. So. That's for sure. Right. Anyway, Lionhook and Kashuri Shabita taking on Shane Taylor promotions. This match is shit. Jericho's done. Hook is shit. Um, Shibata takes the pinfall here. whoop de doo Let's move on. I have nothing else to say because what is up next is Okada taking on Cristiano Argento. Okada wants. He then cuts a promo. Pack. I accept your challenge for AEW Dynasty. What's that? Is that promo worth five million to you or is it not? I'm going to say no, no, <laughs> definitely fucking not. No, but see when Nakamura cuts a promo in the broken Japanese, it just sounds good. Yeah. This just sounded shit. And you can't, well, you, you know, he's a, he's a heel. Uh, so is Okada. Yeah. At least Nakamura puts a bit of that Japanese 
spicy, tangy fucking accent on it. Spicy, tangy. Absolutely shite. Pat comes down. Out come... Ah, oh, uh, me no strong style, uh, Cody Rhodes. Your father inbred. Uh. I mean, Okada. Oh, me, yo, dynasty. What the F- fuck? FTR come down. What are we... Pish theme. Dun 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 you don't blink and you miss it. 40,000 views on YouTube. That's the draw. Yeah. Um, and before people go, but it's some sit down interview. It's not actually at the arena. You see if like The Rock or CM Punk do these backstage. They're getting fucking more than 40k, folks. What right? CM Punk did a off televised um, promo and he got over a million views. Yep. On the YouTube Raw clips. No, and it's the same at Mania. He did like a like a Mania exclusive thing, and so did Uso and Damian Priest. I guarantee, and he, and he got eight hundred thousand more than both of them. But he's it? not a draw, man. The guy doesn't bring in views. So it's you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're a draw, you're going to draw in any format. All right. Anyway, Anna G. I, gar- I guarantee you, the Rock then a sit down, a, a wee sit down interview outside the arena will draw more than the, a, anyone else in the arena. Aye. Other than maybe like, obviously a punk or whatever. Yeah, but, right, Anna Jay against Mariah May. Uh, Mariah May wins. Anything else to say? No. Hot, both of them, but I mean, that's... Mina comes down. Mi- Mi- Mina Shirakawawi comes out with uh, some champagne, pours it in the mouth of both of them. Another Japanese woman Kisses here. Her. Uh, um, this is getting blasted. Some hot but... lesbian act. Well, see, this is probably the only thing I thought that was half decent on the show. Well, this is getting blasted. Well, Rest- of course wrestling it. headlines saying, here we are. At the end of it, because they won't like this. This ain't wrestling. This is sports entertainment. Yeah, but you know what's mad, right? The, see, the, 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 they will bash this. See, this was two men. They'd yeah, they'd be love... fucking loving it, man. That, that's that's the actual, that's the it's, crazy sick thing about it. See, this was what, the, the gay half of, uh, what do you call them? The ta- Max Caster, the other guy. Yeah, but in a, in a lot of thing, right? See, if it was two really ugly women, right, that were like lesbian. They'd be loving it as well. But the, the, the reason why this is getting hate... It's because it was actually two attractive women, and therefore people think this is just to appease men's fantasies. So that that's why this has been bashed. It's not because it's necessarily two women doing it. It's because they think that it's two hot women doing it, therefore it's to please the men in the arena, in the audience. Yeah, and... Uh, it's just a mess, isn't it? But let's, let's end. No, but, you know, even take away the, the kiss... <laughs> I actually, it, it, everything that was on this show, I thought it was no bad, to be honest. Uh, it was a bit weird. I was like, what the fuck? I'm not going to say it was good, but it was like, you know, what is this? Who's this person with some champagne? Why is she stealing the champagne? I don't know. Uh, there was worse things on this show. I'm not, not going to say this was the worst thing I've seen. No, this, this, this probably was the best thing. Uh, Samoa Joe against Dustin Rhodes, right? I'm not going to pretend it was a bad match, but it just feels like they copied Mania. Like, you've got Dustin Rhodes pretty much doing all Cody Rhodes' fucking offense here. Doing the whole dusty thing, I get it. I mean, I guess it is his dad as well, but it's like he's pretty much just in this match because he's a Rhodes. Definitely. And Samoa Joe wins, and it's like that that's your show. And that is your show, folks. I just what what is there to say? Oh, but oh it comes swerve. I, I don't care, right? Now, Wrestle Headlines gave this show a six out of ten. That is the lowest I've seen them ever give a dynamite. Yep. Um, I mean, I think this might be the lowest I ever give a dynamite. I mean, that's a fairly long review. Right, normally we, we hover around like a, a zero to a two with dynamite, but I'm, I'm going to give this a minus, right? <laughs> normally we hover. How the fuck can you hover around a zero? It's fucking bot, it's bottom of the barrel. No, I'm you're, a, you're scraping the shit off the barrel. I'm going to give this a minus five. You know why, right? Is that it? Is that all? I mean... <laughs> yeah, because I think this is dead... Almost a reversible damage to the company. Ah, well, that's debatable. Like, I mean, I think the damage is already done. No, the damage is already done, but I just don't get it. I, I, it's not like they've earned it and I've went... I've seen what they've went to do. The, the, the architect, they're on downfall here. 
everything they did was a fucking mess. Yeah, so I'm getting a minus five. I think yeah, I I I don't see how she'll beat us this year, by the way. Well, um yeah. Osprey fucking sucks. Young Bucks suck. FTR sucks. Tony Khan sucks. Everything about this show sucked. Uh old Dustin Rhodes trying to compete for a title. No, it's funny though, right? Why is Billy Gunn such a bastard for uh, taking on Jay White? But when Dustin Rhodes... Goes, I goes 50-50 with World Champ. It's, it's all right. It, it, it's a great match. It's bullshit. It is, no, no, it's, it's, men, it's, a, it's, it's a mental illness. They, they pick and choose. It's cause, oh, it's because oh, we like Dustin Rhodes because he's a wrestler. Oh, he, 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 he's, a, he's, he's a Rhodes. He's a wrestler, man. He's not a big jacked up guy like Billy Gunn. It's like... Fuck off. <laughs> Just fuck right off. Man. Are you, what, are you getting at minus five? Um, nah. Minus one. So what's that? Minus three? No, minus two, actually. Minus three and a half? Aye. Uh, minus three and a half out of ten. Not good, folks. Oh, hold on, it's not the worst three. I think you gave a dynamite minus 44 once or something. <laughs> well, fucking retract that. This is a minus 44 where I've seen it. This was bad. I mean, it's an irreversible mistake for troops, and uh, yeah. I mean, what I would say is it's gave us something to talk about. I'd, I'd rather this dynamite than the, the boring shit, but anyway, minus three and a half out of ten. 